What I'd like to talk to you about today is how to create a new supplier record. The wizard is fantastic because it takes you through every window so you do not forget to fill up some information. And when you're beginning with Sage, it's very important that you do take the step-by-step -step method. However, once you've mastered the wizard, we can talk you through a quicker way. But the problem with the quicker way is you might forget to fill up some windows. This is why I've chosen to use the wizard. So we are going to put our mouse on the left hand side where it says new supplier. I'm going to press the left mouse button once and it will come up with this supplier record wizard. We're just going to press next. First line appearing is the name. So you put the name of your supplier, the full name. So let's say Sage Training Videos. As I'm typing along, you will see that the account reference box fills up by itself. Sage assume that you're going to use the first eight characters of the name. And remember, this is a unique reference number so once you've done it it's fixed you will not be able to change it so in this case I will call it sage 5000 put my arrow next and press the left mouse button at this stage it tells you that an account already exists and it asks you if you want to use sage 501 it's quite practical if you don't have a specific referencing number the downfall of it is that mean your codes are not really meaning anything. And as it's the first way to find a record when you're going to go and use search and look at things, I would suggest that you do not accept it. You say no and type in a code that means something to you. Now that's where the wizard also fell a little bit because when you're using the wizard it advises you that you can't use that code but it doesn't tell you what was the name of the company that had that code and the reason why i'm giving it numbers is because i want to try to keep the account reference alphabetical so for example here i have sage supply alphabetically sage training need to come afterwards but i can only see it by looking at those records so I would like to call it not Sage 5001, but Sage 6000. So if I get something in between, I still got spaces. I'll put my mouse on next, press the left mouse button. And here you put simply the address detail. I would recommend that you put as much information in here as possible because Sage is going to be your primary program. The other thing is put information at the right place because Sage has got some incredible search engine that will help you find anything you want, but it's a computer. It's not like a person who knows you and you lost your keys. They can say, oh yeah, I know you. You normally leave them in your pockets. It doesn't know. Unless you put it at the right place, it won't know where to search. Okay, so it, your keys got to be on the key rings. Otherwise, you won't find it. So straight address, line one, line two, let's say Tavistock. Now with all the information at the right place, I will be able to find anything I want. So we'll put the phone number in there. Then when you've entered all the, the information, put your mouse on next and press the left mouse button once. There is something in Sage that will be able to send email, email letters and things like that. They might not work if they're in capital. So do try to get into the habit of doing things like your email and your web address in the right format. Sage can still create the supplier without email address, without address at all in there. As long as you've got an account reference, it will create a record. But the more information you put in now, the least you have to go to different program, the more Sage can do for you directly. I.e. you can send email from Sage and all you will have to do is press a button and Sage can create email for you. You can print labels, uh, so the addresses, you can do searches, 
So do put the information. Third number, an account statue. The one, to my opinion, that are the most important is open, which is the one it should be at when you're starting. Liquidation, because it's always worth knowing when somebody is basically closed on. Exceeded credit limit on old, but this one to me is a lot more important into your customer window. However, it can be important because it could be a supplier that you want to make sure you never go over the credit limit and go through them one at a time because depending on your business, each and every one of those might be more relevant to you. On Sage, we'll see a bit later on, there's a place where you can add some notes to your supplier record. I want anybody who use this supplier to know that really we should never put an order through on Monday because on Mondays they're so busy that it often gets forgotten. The only problem with it is when you've put the notes in there, it's not because you've keyed them that somebody's going to go looking into the note tab to make sure that every Monday they can't send an order. So it gets forgotten. However, if you put on the account status C note, then every time you do anything with that supplier, C note will pop up. And if you can imagine, here you are typing your purchase order, C notes come up, you're going to go and have a look. If nothing pops up, put your order through 